Uh, to make a, a heater or heating element, nichrome is a common material to use. It has a resistivity that's higher than that of, of normal metals like aluminum and copper. Therefore, you don't have to use like hundreds of feet of the wire to to get enough resistance uh, to you know match your application. So here's um this is this is actually we uh, the, the physics class a couple of years ago actually did a project where we physically made uh, a heater element for for a water heater that actually worked. And I don't I actually don't remember the very specific numbers we used, but I think. Um, we shot for something about like this. We didn't want to have it be 120 volts because that can really zap people. That's a dangerously high voltage. Um, so we, we transformed that voltage down to 24 and we aim for about a thousand watts of power. And uh, maybe we use 10 gauge nichrome, maybe not. But um, let's assume we did or we, or we want to. We could, you know, we could do this again. So let's just skip to the end, right? Um, so for uh, for to find the length, you know that uh, length is in the equation that relates resistance to resistivity. So we're going to end up uh, solving that equation for length. Resistance is resistivity times length over cross-sectional area. Solve for length by uh, multiplying both sides by area and dividing both sides by resistivity. This is rho, by the way. This is a Greek letter rho. And we can Google the resistivity of nichrome. It's, uh, I made sure this value was in SI units. 1.1 times 10 to the negative 6. And we're also going to need its cross-sectional area for this equation. And again, um, there's all sorts of tables online that will tell you everything about uh, different gauges of wire. So what I found was a diameter for what I found was a diameter for 10 gauge wire. So let's uh, let's rearrange or re kind of revamp this equation for area over here. Uh, instead of radius, let's put in half of the diameter because that's what the radius is. Uh, so half gets squared and ends up with a quarter when you square a half. Uh, I put in the diameter in meter, and uh, of course we square that to get uh, an area in meters squared, and that just leaves us, um, you know, we got resistivity, we got area, now that leaves us with resistance to find, and that's the hard one. Uh, there might be multiple ways to do this, but here's what I might do. Uh, I know we know power and voltage, and I know that we can, um, you know, quickly find current using P equals IV, like that. And that's um, that's a lot of current. You, this might alarm you if you recall uh, that you know a lot of circuits are 15 amp circuits. But this isn't actually the the, the, the current going through the, the the wires in your wall. This is the current after uh, the the voltage has been transformed down. So if you have a charger cable that applies like 12 volts to your computer, uh, you know you're gonna you might you be running a lot of current, uh, you know through the, the the part of the wire that comes out of there uh, because it's at a lower voltage. All right, now that we know current, um, you, you know um, the power equations and the Ohm's law equations are are big things in this chapter. So when in doubt, think of think of Ohm's law. Uh, we already use the power equations. So one way to write Ohm's law that makes the most sense to me is that current is proportional to voltage, inversely proportional to resistance. Uh, we can rearrange this to solve for resistance. And um, yeah, we know these values. So we get uh, a number for resistance in ohms, and now we can plug this in to uh, to the last part of our problem that we did first. There's our R. There's our A. 
and there's the resistivity and there you go a very reasonable and workable length of nichrome to, to maybe you know wrap around a few times and make a, a heating coil out of